Okay, so the last page here of chapter 3, we're looking at part F. If a subsidiary has depreciable assets, how should the depreciation be recorded on the consolidated balance sheet? You can either use the proportionate method, so you can read in your text. Um, I don't think we make you do it, but um, just go over and look at it. It's similar to how you did the revaluation approach for um, capital assets when you had to recalculate accumulated depreciation. Um, I won't test you on it. Okay, so example six. What I mean here, like what the, what the issue is, is that let's say here's my, our parent, here's our sub, then we put our changes in, our debits and credits, and then we do the consolidated by adding or subtracting, okay? Well, the problem is we have to write the sub's assets to fair value. So here's our sub, 200 for the cost, minus 50 accumulated depreciation is the carrying value or the book value of 150. But we know the fair value is 210. So the question is, we should be adding the 500 plus the 210. But we've got these numbers here that are messing things up. Okay. So how should we allocate the difference here between the 150 and 210, which is 60, right? How should we allocate it? So the proportionate method breaks this over this into percentages and then multiplies it by these two things, okay? The net method, which is a lot easier, is you zero, you net out the accumulated depreciation. So you do 200 minus 150, and that gives you 150. Okay, you just make this zero, make mathematically it's identical, right? Okay, so now you say, I need this 150 to be 210. So I need to change it by $60 and as debit or credit. I was waiting for an answer if you can believe it. Okay, it's a debit because we're making it's 210 minus 150. So now you can add across. So 50, sorry, 500 plus 150, and are we adding or subtracting 60? Adding, so we get 710. Our depreciation is just the 180, and so that gives us 530. And that's it. Okay? So, this isn't a big deal. The problem, though, is we've got 60 we have to allocate to each of those in proportion or percentage. Okay, 20 out of 150 and 50 out of 150 times 60. That would be the proportion approach. Or we can just net this out, and which you can also do with the revaluation approach. Remember the methods? and then add across, and this accumulated will always be zero. You don't need to know consolidations to an A level. Um, you know, if you've heard about the CPA and their competency map, A is you have to know it inside out, backwards, forwards. B is a little less, and C is the lowest. Um, um, consolidations is a C level, which it won't feel like after. It's just that they're a lot more complex than this. Sort of like tax, you know where tax is complex, but really if you take that advanced level tax, it's like way, way above. Same with this. So I'm keeping it fairly simple. I think the easiest way to do it is just net it out and focus on doing liquidation, getting all the pieces together. Okay, so now if you were doing this, and you need an elimination entry. Remember I said we'd keep adding elimination entries? The elimination entry for this... Oh, you can easily put it together. What happened to this 50 from accumulated? Well, we closed it out. 
How do we do that with a debit or a credit? Well, it's usually a credit balance, so we debit accumulated depreciation for 50 and credit equipped for 50. Then for mark to fair value entry, you debit equipment for 60 and credit it would end up being an accumulated depreciation along with all the other things. Okay? So, this was a big chapter. It threw a lot of stuff at you, okay? Please take your time, go through it, do the questions, okay? And you'll see it all falling uh, into place. As we move on, we narrow down the number of questions we do, but they're bigger, okay? So just please kind of stay up. Even though some of this, when we do it, we go, well, that makes sense, easy. So then you put it together with the whole consolidation, then you ask for the elimination entries. Well, you could easily forget that one. There's just so many little places you make mistakes, okay? But if you stay kind of uh, caught up and on things and ask questions if you need to, um, my office hours are open, and um, I, I, I have students that do very well at this too. So mostly it's if you fall behind and you kind of maybe skip a couple chapters and then you go, oh yeah, this still seems easy, but you're missing, okay? Um, just so you know, a big part of your final exam is one question because that's how big a consolidation is. So um, just it builds and builds and builds. So just remind yourself, come on, I can do this, pull it together, and uh, you should be okay. Okay, last stuff for this chapter. Read about the drought or method in your text. Push down accounting. Um, Subsidiary form by parent and the other consolidated financial statements in the year of acquisition. Not too, too important, but start reading about this for sure. It's just a shortcut approach. And it's um, um, it's not the opposite, but we did working paper approach in example four. Okay, um, please read the entire chapter um, as there are several concepts in it which will be covered in later chapters. Okay, don't memorize it or anything like that, but what we've in this chapter is what's testable for this chapter, but they mention different concepts. Just get to hearing them because they're going to be brought up again. Okay? Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, listen to this over. Try the questions again if you're duck and can't do any statements. Try doing them with blank pages. Okay, take care. We'll see you in chapter four.